Hey everybody, Rocks and Box 90 here with a speculation video with a couple of spoilers thrown in, mostly speculation, and it's going to be really fun. We got some M15, we got some cons of Tarkir, and we got even more cool speculation stuff about Liliana the Veil right now. But just going to quickly mention that we're approaching our 5,000 subscriber mark, and we're going to have a huge, awesome Innistrad Booster Box giveaway. So once we get there, you guys should stay tuned and jump in for that because it's going to be amazing four videos. So until we get there, let's get some speculation spoilers. We got an M15 trailer from E3 2014. Let's check it out as we usually do where we go through and pause. If you guys want to watch it with full crazy metal -ish sound, then you guys can go to the link in the description of the video. So we got a planeswalker who hunts his own kind, which I think means us because we're awesome, but we're much better than Garrick. Now he's hunting you. We've seen this in the past trailer before and it pretty much is the same, but here we go. We got Jace, and then we got here, Flash. We got the Goblin Rebel Master. I actually pulled it up on another screen just in case, but basically it's the same thing. It's three for a 2-2 Goblin Warrior. Other Goblin creatures you control attack every turn, but at the beginning of your combat, you get a 1-1 with haste, so pretty much attacking. And then whenever it attacks, it gets one blow so on turn for each other attacking Goblin. So there you go, Goblin, Goblin Tribal. That's pretty awesome. If this card is appearing in M15, then it's pretty sick because... It forces you to attack every turn with your goblin, sure, but it is a, really a combination of goblin pile driver and hero blade hold. Put them together and you got this guy. Very cool, lord like figure. I really like him. I think the art is fantastic and the card itself is a very strong. I, I don't know if it's going to replace the lords that give 1 plus 1 to all your other goblins. I'm not quite sure if it's good enough for that, but it could very well see play in certain versions of goblins, and I think it's a very cool card, so that that's pretty cool. Then let's keep going. We got here. The effects look really good. Here we got Jace walking through some doors. I'm pretty sure it looks like Jace over there. And then we got, uh, coming through here, we have a new card, the Hunter Demon, who I also pulled up. As he, he flashes by really fast. He's gorgeous. Our Indulgent Tormentor. Raw. 5 for a 5 3 Demon. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card unless target opponent, target opponent, you get to choose who, sacrifices a creature or pays 3 life. All right, so this is what hurts. The pay three life is what makes it not an EDH commander staple of any kind, but it's really strong for a five mana drop. It's kind of like Athreos, if you think about it, because it's, yeah, it's drawing cards. It's not getting back creatures, but it's the same kind of effect. They need to pay life or sack a creature. Both effects are painful for what it is, and it happens every single turn. And five for a five three is not bad. You kind of wish his toughness stat was a little up, but he's very solid rare, very strong. Uh, I... Not quite sure he'd be strong enough for standard, especially when you have Master of Feast, which comes into play one to two turns earlier. But I do think he's a very cool card, and probably, I'm wondering where it would be most effective. Maybe Cube? I don't really know. EDH Commander, I think it's a little weak, to be honest. I mean, maybe if it's if it's just out there in a multiplayer game every turn, every single player, but it doesn't work that way because it's your upkeep, so I don't know. I don't know if I love it that much. It's it, The life thing doesn't really work so well. Back to the trailer. So we got Gutter Snipe is back. Here we have Liliana, and notice here, we'll get to her in a second, Liliana of the Veil. So here we see the veil on her face, which makes me wonder, because we already speculated about her being Liliana Vess in M15, but what? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going for her being Liliana of the Veil. So here we got some more cards. I, we saw that goblin guy again. Devastating spells. We're going to see Grizzle Brandon here any minute. And you get to make custom decks, which is pretty solid. Normal stuff. Pretty cool. Smarter opponents. Pretty much it just looks like a continuous version of a Duel of the Planeswalkers, which is what we usually expect from these kind of things. And um, nothing. You know, multiplayer, Deadliest Game. Grizzle Brand, there you go. The Goblin Guy. And then we got Garrick hulking out, and he's hunting us. And then that's. A dead thing. Garrick probably killing it. Okay, so we know pretty much that's the usual Duel of Planeswalkers stuff. What's interesting, you notice that Liliana of the Veil, she's wearing a veil in that trailer. But check this out. Um, here we have Guys the Same Traft. So this is going to be the promo we saw a while ago with on MTGO. Now we're finding out all World Magic Cup qualifier participants will get this card, which is freaking gorgeous. And while I like the other art better, I still think it's a very solid card. And of course, foils are always nice. So very cool. Get in on that. Then here we see a top 8 playman. This is the Veil. So I almost wonder if in M15 we're going to see Liliana's Veil maybe as an equipment, hopefully a great one. So this is very cool. And 
And it makes me think it's a card is because of the art on the playmats. They tend to be of cards, not just promotional art. So that's, in, it could very well be a card, but if they have Liliana's veil, wouldn't they also have Liliana of the veil? Why Liliana Vest? That's before she has the veil going on in her story arc. And this is after with her and Garrick, so it's a little strange. And here, if you go to the comic here of The Hunter and the Veil, it's three parts you guys can read through. I'll put it in the description with everything else, as I always do. But if you notice here, she's wearing the veil in this, when she takes Garrick down and makes him cursed. So if this is following that story arc, then why? And if, we have, and if we're going to have the veil, doesn't that imply it's Liliana and the Veil? It seems a lot more evidence that they would want Liliana and the Veil, not Liliana Vess, in M15. Right? Seems pretty, seems pretty solid evidence to me. I mean, at least for why Liliana the Veil would make more sense, whether or not they actually have her is another story, but pretty cool, gorgeous playmat. Love it. The last thing to mention before we wrap up this video, we have some stuff in about Cons of Tarkir, where you know that there's going to be a large, small, large block. So that's the setup. We didn't know 100% what it was. Now we do. I think we mentioned it before, actually. And then here, a note from Kelly Diggs on the creation of Matic Confluence about paying life. They're saying that they want to match the land cycles we're most likely to reprint. Now, paying life, if you recall, the fetch lands are the ones that you pay life for most of the time. I mean, you could do things like Har the Horizon Canopy and the, and what's that card called? Grove of the Burn Willows. Those cards, Nimbus Maze, those kind of cards also pay life. So don't be distracted here thinking it must be fetch lands. It doesn't have to be fetch lands. And it could be those cards in some degree or another. Um, and I don't think they're going to reprint Shocklands. The other thing they speculate, though, is here is that they could have the fetch lands in the block following the Cons of Tarkir block, which I think makes sense. I think fall 2015 could definitely see fetch lands. So that it could be one way or the other. I'm saying it could easily be the future site lands as in as much as it is the fetch lands and such, um, if it's going to be in this block. And they also mentioned about the wedge. Marrow said, is there going to be anything common with the wedge of cheese? And Marrow answered yes. So it could very well be that there's going to be a wedge theme which we already speculated about. I think that's pretty cool that Marrow, he's, it could be intentionally misleading as they're saying here, but it could also be realistic just because of the art styles of, that we've already talked about with the three colors on the samurai dudes. So anyway, that's pretty much all I got to say in this video. It's a lot of cool stuff. Definitely check out the trailer and check out the Lily on the Veil. Do you think Lily on the Veil could be an M15? Does this put more evidence for that? Doesn't this guy start saying trap looked awesome? Put all your comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, tap the like button. And if you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe because we have an Innistrad Booster Box giveaway coming to you real soon. And as always, Rocks the Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.